King K. Rool is a tank. He's a character designed to absorb incoming attacks through his belly and deal it back with incredible damage output and kill potential, all while surviving to ridiculous percents as the second heaviest character in the game with a serviceable recovery to avoid early stocks. And to combat the various zoners of the world, Rule is armed to the tooth with his blunderbuss, crown, and reflector, which poke at a distance and force his opponents to interact. Despite his royal thickness and similar to his fellow tanks, K. Rool's playstyle is kind of pigeonholed into taking a ton of damage, forced to rely on his armor to compensate for poor frame data. This wouldn't be so bad if his armor didn't eventually break after taking enough damage, inherently putting a timer and limit on some of his best moves until the belly heals. And despite his high weight and vertical recovery, K. Rool is extremely exploitable the moment he has to recover horizontally potentially leading to lost stocks at earlier percents, or at the very least a ton of damage at the ledge. Ultimately, this puts K. Rool in a weird spot, as he has potential to take stocks at very low percents, yet he's forced to rely on his opponents messing up whenever he's put into disadvantage. This, in turn, makes his matchup spread very polarizing across not only all characters, but all skill levels. The big croc will dominate at low and mid levels where players are more prone to making mistakes, and struggles more at top level where players are not dropping combos and put him into the wash. Still, no matter what matchup or skill level, he's thick, with three Cs, which is pretty powerful in its own right. Belly Armor is King K. Rool's signature mechanic that allows him to armor through a majority of attacks and dividing the incoming damage between K. Rool and his belly. The belly itself has 18.01 HP and will visually start showing cracks the more damage it takes. If the belly runs out of HP, K. Rool will be stunned and left wide open for an attack, usually resulting in a lost stock. Fortunately, the belly will heal 0.16 HP per second and is shown visually as the cracks dissipate. Overall, the belly armor is a crucial tool to master, as it allows K. Rool to win out on trades and simply power through faster attacks. The uses can range from edge guarding to landing to powerful burst options. At the same time, getting a feel for the belly's health is essential. Armoring through attacks is good, but can backfire and turn off a lot of K. Rool's kit for a long period of time, especially in the situations when you don't need the armor to win the interaction. This is why it's important to always keep track of your belly, whether it's relying on forward air and down air, or simply shielding and zoning out with projectiles. King K. Rool relies more on a beaten punish neutral, forcing his opponents to approach and responding to whatever option they choose. But even when he gets hit, his high weight and recovery allow him the longevity to keep the stock going. Really, the goal isn't to tank every hit you see. In fact, the belly armor is mainly there to aid K. Rool when things go south, which is why you'll often find the croc hanging back with crown orang and blunderbuss to cut off portions of the stage before going in to punish whatever his opponents choose. Eventually, however, his opponents will find a way in, which is where King K. Rool's high damage output and armor give him a major boost. Unfortunately, he will more often than not be outmatched by characters with faster frame data. His saving grace comes in the form of his belly and super armor, allowing him to tank through the faster hits and clap back with a ton of damage. The armor alone gives K. Rool a manageable disadvantage state, ranging from out of shield, to landing, or recovering back to ledge. Alternatively, once you successfully land a hit is when K. Rool must capitalize either with massive damage or, if possible, the entire stock. K. Rool isn't a fast combo-heavy character, rather he's a lumbering giant that relies on 2 and 3 hit combos to deal his damage. As such, K. Rool advantage typically entails knocking his opponents offstage for a ledge trap, as he doesn't have the speed to continue a juggle. Once they're at the ledge is when K. Rool can shine with a neutral air for immediate options, baiting an unsafe getup with blunderbuss suck, and reacting to ledge rolls. A lot of K. Rool's play is like an actual crocodile, lying in wait for the right opening to present itself, then charging in with the intent of ending a stock in mere seconds. If the attack fails, your powerful thick body allows you to live to fight another day.
K-Rule has the strongest gentleman jab in the game in terms of damage. In addition to forcing attack situation at low percents, it's his fastest move at frame 4 and is a great get off me option. Additional utility comes in the form of jab locks, with the first two hits, potentially leading to a down tilt kill confirm at high percents. F-Tilt is my personal favorite move in the game and is a surprisingly useful one at that. It has a sweet spot on K. Rool's hands and a sour spot on his arms that can be angled up and down. But the main reason why this move is so useful is the belly armor at the start, which punishes mashy opponents and stuffs faster approach options, and gives K. Rool an effective whiff punish. The sweet spot will kill at high percents, working particularly well at the ledge or out of a down throw at high percents. Up tilt is a fast uppercut designed to anti-air or close out the stock at high percents. It has a strong hit at the start, a lingering weak hit, and arm intangibility for a majority of the active frames. The strong hit will likely be used to punish cross-ups out of shield or combo out of a down throw at high percents. Out of shield in particular can be optimized with the ability of reversing up tilt with the C-stick set to tilt. This also allows you to pivot cancel a move, providing a little more slide when using it. To perform a pivot cancel, dash in one direction, turn around so you get the skid animation, and immediately up tilt within one frame. The weak hit, while lacking any true combos, does function as a disjointed anti-air to put opponents in a really bad position. This alone provides K-Roll with an effective platform pressure option or a follow-up up pair if it connects. Down tilt is a huge stomp with a whole array of hitboxes, but is primarily used for closing out stocks. The foot itself has a hitbox that sends away, while the stomp has a berry hitbox and a larger, weaker quake hitbox that sends up. While the slow startup and lack of armor does limit its reliability, K. Roll still finds some use of it in the form of two framing recoveries or as a hard whiff punish, since the berry time is long enough to get quality damage or the entire stock. Dash attack is mainly used as a quick burst option to take stocks and catch landings. It has a strong hit at the start, followed by a lingering weak hit. The fast startup and belly armor makes for an effective burst option, and is something opponents always have to respect. This is made even scarier with the use of instant dash attack, which is done by dashing and immediately flicking your C-stick forward. Combo-wise, you'll mainly be using it out of a forward throw or landing aerial at low percents. It's a strong move, but do not spam it, as it's super high commitment and will never be safe on shield, even if you cross up. F Smash is an extremely strong punch, specifically designed to call out options and take early stocks, with a sweet spot on his glove and a sour spot on his arm. K. Roll can also angle it up and down, with up dealing a little bit more damage. Unfortunately, the slow startup and relatively mediocre hitbox makes for an average smash attack with not a ton of death. The only reliable way to combo into it is out of a down tilt berry, which will admittedly kill it pretty early percents. Oh god, up smash is a mess from the hitboxes to the launch angles. There are three parts to the attack. The initial jump has a strong and late hit and sends up, giving K. Roll head intangibility in addition to belly armor throughout the active frames. After the jump is a dive that sends away and has a very niche spike hitbox. This all ends with K. Roll finally planking on the ground with a landing hitbox that sends away. Unfortunately, it will rarely work as an out of shield option unless your opponent crosses up but it can be useful for shield pokes or pressure on platforms due to the sheer amount of hitboxes that have to be blocked. Combo-wise, it works surprisingly well out of a down air spike on stage, which can function as a kill confirm at specific percent windows. The rest of the move is quite honestly pretty worthless, as it will not kill at any reasonable percent, nor is it safe on shield. 
Down Smash is a huge body slam with a ton of shield damage, stun, and knockback. It has a strong hit on K. Roll's belly and a weaker but larger quake hit once he slams the ground. What's interesting and unique is the startup animation. K. Roll jumps into the air to high profile incoming attacks, then punishes with a huge slam. And even if the attacks do connect, K. Roll has belly armor at the start, effectively making him invincible to everything that isn't an instant belly break. You'll primarily find success with the move to punish over extensions or option coverage at the ledge with the landing hit. Neutral Air is a keystone attack for Rule and is something you have to master. It has a strong hit at the start and a lingering weak hit. The long lasting hitbox, low landing lag, and safety on shield make it an amazing tool in his neutral, as you can safely pressure shields or simply tank through projectiles and attacks. But what puts it over the top is its ability to combo, with Strong Nair being preferred at low percents while Weak Nair becomes extremely effective at high. Depending on percents, you'll typically want to follow up with Dash Attack for killing or Dash Grab for quick damage. Off stage, Gnair can be used to edgeguard most recoveries since the armor will keep K. Roll safe, while also knocking opponents away to either gimp them or reset the recovery situation. Defensively, it is K. Roll's most reliable out of shield option, covering both in front and behind at a respectable 10 frames. In addition, it is K. Roll's main landing option with a fastball. The belly armor will usually cover and power through any juggle attempts before transitioning into a combo tool. Really the only time when landing there is a liability is when the opponents get a feel for the parry timing and start punishing K. Roll for spamming it. K. Roll has one of the most damaging forward airs in the game, mainly used for shield pressure and anti-airs. It has a sweet spot on K. Roll's feet, a sour spot on his legs, in addition to getting progressively weaker the later it connects. But regardless of how it hits, forward air will start killing off the side at pretty early percents. All its properties coalesce into a strong tool in the neutral, as it's safe on shield when spaced and has enough range to call out jumps. Connecting at low percents can lead into quick combos or at the very least a tech situation. and for some reason it can beat out projectiles with the massive amount of priority it has. Really, its goal is to keep opponents in disadvantage, as the horizontal knockback angle works amazingly in K. Rool's kit. The only major downside is the astonishing amount of end lag if you don't land the move, making it borderline suicidal trying to edgeguard with it. Back air is maybe the most satisfying move to hit in the entire game, and also one of the strongest kill moves in K. Roll's kit. It has a sweet spot on K. Roll's hand and a sour spot on his arm. Hitting an aerial opponent just as the fist goes down will spike opponents at criminally early percents. But even when they aren't being spiked, they're likely dying at 85 due to the enormous amount of knockback. Being minus 7 on shield also makes a relatively safe move when spaced, or you can bait out an option with a double jump to hard punish them. But let's be honest, the main reason you're going to be using this move is to spike every everyone into the Shadow Realm, and while I can tell you to not spam the move as it can get punished by faster attacks, it can be comboed into from a forward throw, though you'll have to be extremely quick with your reverse aerial rush, and isn't true on the majority of the cast. Up air is a high risk, high reward headbutt into the air with a strong hit at the start followed by a lingering weak hit. In addition to the belly armor, K. Rool's head is intangible on frames 7 to 13, making him only really vulnerable at his arms and legs. And unlike other up airs, K. Rool does a mini leap into the air, followed by a colossal amount of end lag. This end lag is really what makes this move so niche, as whiffing leaves K. Rool wide open for a punish. As a result, you'll probably want to stay away from this move in the neutral, reserving it only for a hard callout, as the knockback will kill at very, very early percents. Though when you do land an attack, up air can be surprisingly useful as a kill confirm, typically out of a down air stage spike when the up smash will no longer combo. Up throw can also be nice as it allows K. Roll to chase and maybe catch a landing. 
Its last use comes in the form of recovering, where it's actually pretty useful. The little jump at the start will stall you in the air so you can drift towards the stage, where he only really needs to recover vertically. But again, this can be punished when telegraphed. Down air is a huge stomp that spikes at the start and sends away for the rest. And as with K. Rool's other moves, the end lag is pretty brutal, inherently limiting its utility offstage. However, the large hitbox compensates for it, as down air can be quite devastating at the ledge for two framing recoveries. In terms of combos, down air finds a surprising amount of use and potential. At low percents, down air can lead into a grab, dash attack, and tilts. Mid percent is when it starts spiking on stage, perfectly setting up for an up smash for massive damage or the entire stock and at high percents, you can up air instead. Blunderbuss is one of K. Roll's two main zoning options while also functioning as a command grab. K. Roll fires a slow-moving cannonball that cuts off parts of the stage, hold down special, and Blunderbuss becomes a wind box that sucks in nearby opponents or cannonballs before spinning them back out at one of three possible angles, depending on how you point your control stick. If an opponent and cannonball are both getting sucked, the Blunderbuss will always prioritize the opponent. In neutral, the cannonball is mainly used to cut off portions of the stage and force an approach that K. Roll can then punish. Typically, you'll want to either shoot it on the ground to cut off grounded approaches, or out of a full hop to cut off the air. Combo-wise, Blunderbuss is capable of dealing outrageous damage, and even stealing some stocks. The cannonball by itself moves slow enough where K. Roll can knock his opponents into it, whether it be from an aerial or dash attack. Realistically, however, the better use is to mix up your opponents with Crown into a Blunderbuss to send offstage, or just getting the damage. Ledge Trapping is another great use, especially with K. Roll's ability to drop through platforms to bait a getup option. Standing around a roll's distance away and sucking in allows K. Roll to cover a majority of the getup options, though this can be beaten by just waiting on the ledge or a very long getup attack. Unfortunately, Blunderbuss can be be reversed to mix up K. Roll's movement. This is done by jumping in one direction, Blunderbuss, and immediately flicking your control stick in the opposite direction. Crownerang is arguably K. Roll's most important tool, functioning as an all-purpose neutral, combo, and zoning option. K. Roll gains super armor and throws his crown, traveling a respectable distance before returning back. Crown follows K. Roll, but will drop to the floor if he moves away from the original launch point, where it becomes a projectile that opponents can pick up and use against him. Picking up the crown comes with a fair amount of lag, and is generally advised to avoid the animation. Fortunately, we can cancel this animation by sliding into the crown with a ground attack, landing with an aerial, dash shielding, or jumping just as the crown touches K. Roll. Additionally, K. Roll can utilize a tech called crown sliding that allows him to slide across the ground while picking up his crown. This is done by throwing the crown, dashing towards it, and turning around just as it gets back to K. Roll. The slide is important as it opens up a ton more combos and finishers, while also mixing up K. Roll's movement in the neutral. And on that note, Crownerang is a keystone tool in his neutral, naturally cutting off parts of the stage and forcing an approach option. This combined with Blunderbuss can make it extremely difficult to get in on K. Rule. And even when they do get in, Crownerang's super armor and startup make it a lot safer and really will only get beat by a grab or high damage options. Throw in the previously mentioned combos and you get an all-purpose projectile that is useful in all major game states. And just like Blunderbuss, Crownerang can be B-reversed and wave bounce to bait out an option and mix up K. Rool's movement. Propeller Pack is K. Rool's up special, and is admittedly a mixed bag. The Croc gains a hitbox above with good distance at a decent speed, but slow acceleration at the start. On one hand, it's a very strong vertical recovery option, as only a select few characters can consistently hit through the propeller hitbox. On the much larger hand, it is one of the most exploitable recoveries in the entire game, strictly because of the horrid horizontal movement. 
This implicitly makes K. Rool stocks a lot more fragile, as any character can easily edgeguard him, even some of the worst characters in the game. This is why when Rool is forced to recover horizontally, he'll usually try to stall his fall until he needs to go up, whether it's with up airs or counter stalls. Outside of recovery, the propeller hitbox can be used to cheese some people and score some early kills, which is really funny but not super practical. The better use for it is setting up a potential reverse edge guard or immediate punishes for standing too close to the ledge. And to close off the specials, we have Gut Check, K. Rool's hilarious counter and reflector to punish overaggression and zoners respectively. The damage multiplier of 1.5 makes it the second highest damage counter in the game, allowing you to score some insanely early kills. Hitting the opposite direction as you counter will reverse it, potentially providing a use in a reverse edgeguard situation. But regardless of how it's inputted, Gut Check is a fairly standard counter and reflector. It's useful against mashy opponents and projectile spammers, but you have to know for sure when an attack is coming, as whiffing leaves K. Rool extremely vulnerable. And as mentioned earlier, its additional use comes in the form of stalling K. Rool offstage, as using it in the air stops his aerial momentum. As a character that naturally forces up shields, K. Rool has an exceptional set of throws that provide him with all the tools he needs. Forward throw is your go-to throw at low percents, true comboing into a dash attack for quick and easy damage. Additionally, you can opt to instant RAR back air as a mix-up for a devastating spike. Back throw is amazing at killing off the side at high percents. The nasty launch angle and high knockback put opponents offstage if not straight into the blast zone. Up throw deals a whopping 19%, which is actually more damaging than some combo throws. You'll generally want to go for this when forward throw stops comboing, which is around mid to high percents. Either way, it puts opponents in a pretty bad spot, allowing K. Roll to surprise up air or maintain a vantage state, though it can kill with the help of platforms. Down throw buries opponents into the dirt, but is very easy to mash out quickly. As such, you'll want to reserve this for high percents when K. Roll can combo with an up tilt, F tilt, dash attack, or jab. Though at mid percents, you can opt to go for an up air if you're predicting a mash. And if they don't mash at all, you can go for basically whatever you want. King K. Roll is a traditional heavyweight zoner that rewards creativity and innovation. On the surface, he's a simplistic heavyweight, but when you delve into his meta, you'll find a crocodile, lying in wait for the perfect opportunity to strike and sauce on his opponents. Keep him out with crown and blunderbuss, spike everyone you see, and you might get combo for days, but let me remind you that being thick has its benefits. Thank you all for watching, I hope you enjoyed it and learned something useful. If you did, let me know by leaving a like and subscribing if you would like to see more. I'd like to give a huge shout out to KRoll34 for helping me gather the gameplay, and to the KRoll Discord server for helping me compile the information in this guide. If you're a KRoll main and want to learn more about his metagame, be sure to join the server. Links are in the description. If there's a character you want me to cover, let me know in a comment below. That's all I have for now, stay thick, and I will see you all later.